the R6 that this is going to go on you've seen in previous episodes and uh, we're getting some oversized valves in it uh, these are still stock size uh, 23 millimeter these are going to 24 millimeter and uh, see what this thing does I'm looking at um, well into the 130s is what I believe will come out of this the intakes have been ported a long time ago they're all very beautiful but, um, this will be getting the gray ceramic and you know we've got some of the copper colored ceramic on here from before I never baked this head, so all this can wipe pretty much right off. But, um, but yeah, a little close up. Big, small. All oh, those are still small. These were ported before. But, uh, we're going even bigger on the ports though. Massive difference in valve seats. One's cut to a 23 and the other one's cut to a 24. Port still needs to be opened up. That's the port after it's been opened up. Gigantic cut off of this bad boy. That is gonna be one high, high compression R6. Next up, ceramic coating. So we got our next R6 project, and this is what we're starting with. A freaking busted cylinder head. I have another cylinder head to go on this that already has a lot of work done to it. You'll get to see that in, uh, might get to see it before seeing this video, depending upon what I feel like showing. So what we're starting with, and then you'll get to see what we're doing. All right, so we got the head off. Now we're getting to see what we're dealing with. We got uh, one really bad valve. Piston came up and hit it, so we can assume that all of those ones are bad. That uh, the rest of them I should be able to salvage. Uh, and obviously a piston that has not been happy. Um, the other ones are good. So this bottom end is going to go in the garbage. Everything else we will salvage out of this motor. And we will use the good parts out of this motor which just one cylinder is taken out for measurement purposes. This is a good crank, good rotating assembly, but I have no transmission in it. So we will use the transmission out of one and this. Up. We're gonna take this piston from this to that today because we do not need these crowns in order to fit into the R6 combustion chamber. Here's our stock piston out of our other 600. Nice big crown on it. Everything else lines up perfectly. But uh, in order to get it to fit into the R6 combustion chamber, we got to make it look like this. Take all of those high edges off and uh, completely reshape it. This ends up looking almost like the R6 piston, but uh, we lighten it up a lot when it's all done. Um, of 20 grams less than the stock R6 piston, which will allow us to rev it another 600 RPM. So we got one side most of the way there. We still got to hit it with the uh, with the sander to get it down to the final part that uh, requires a bit more measurement compared to what we started off with. A big lump. Um, we're getting this surface here equal to the level of this surface. Uh, using the piston rings makes it a lot easier to line these up to each other and make sure they're all to the same depth.
All right, we got them all close enough where we can test fit them on the top of the motor. And all we got left is to get these corners all shaped the same, which now that they're all, all of this area is at the height that it needs to be. And we'll make sure that there's no high spots. Um, all the imperfections will get filled with the uh, ceramic coat. Uh, it'll, it'll fill about three meter, or, uh, three thousandths perfection, imperfections. But, uh, we gotta get all these corners equal to each other uh, from one to the other. That out and uh, this part of it will be done. And get these off of the rods and uh, finish the, uh, the weight reduction. Just a little bit of the porting process of the throttle body. There's a ledge in there on these R6s. Porting that out. You might still send these throttle bodies to be bored out. Go from 41 to something bigger. Uh, the amount that this thing is going to breathe, it's going to need it. Stock throttle blade. Fully ported throttle blade. A lot smoother. Air slips by a whole lot better. Ported throttle bodies, anyone? Yeah, those are thin. In case you think I didn't take that much material out, that's just out of one of the holes. So, four times that. Just the stern of one side of the rod, other side of the rod. Sighted on this R6 build, there's one of our rods, there's our pistons, our beautiful ports, ceramic coating on the combustion chamber. Ceramic coating on the exhaust valves, intake valve, top of the piston, Teflon skirts, 22 gram reduction in moving mass per piston. All right, so we got four cutters in front of us today because we are back on the R6 cylinder head, but you're already going to know that because you're in the R6 video. And uh, we got a 75 degree, we got a 60 degree, we got a 45 degree and we got a 31 uh, yeah 31 with a wonderful little bit here that does a bevel on itself but uh we're not using that part of it today um we need to i've already gone through and done these three cylinders of cleaning all the uh, coating off of the seat because we need it to be like that and I'm just going to do this by hand because I don't feel like getting out the tool I'll finish that up after the video but just by hand this blade does plenty of cutting on its own <sighs> almost shiny already just from that and uh whoa what the hell happened there I'm sorry my finger went over the lens all we got to do is get the coating off, which we're not trying to do anything more. And then we go to the 60. 60 gets lots of grip on there. You can see that one already got some shine to it. The 45, I will need to use some pressure on because it doesn't cut as much. But these are already cut before, before coating it. And uh, unless I choose to sink that exhaust valve a little bit, which we are probably not going to do, uh, I might choose to do that. This one definitely doesn't need any extra pressure. Just the weight of it itself will create a shiny line right around there. So we know that there's no none of that stuff left on there. I'm going to go and hit it with 45 again. Let the weight of itself do all the cutting. And then we'll come back and lap that with a uh, with a steel valve that's not going to stay in this head because it's going to get titanium valves, which are these ones right here. But they have a coating on them that we don't want to... Oh, come on, focus camera. we got a coating on there that we don't want it to knock off. That, uh, that's our ceramic coating on the top there. But, um, yeah, anyway, they are uh, DLC coated in a way. And uh, we can't do that with these valves, but these ones over here on our beautiful little turbo cylinder head is also the same size valve but it's a steel one and this one's shiny so 
I haven't used it for lapping before, but it will fit down in that beautiful hole and, uh, and get some lapping compound on there and get a perfect seal since we do these by hand. Um, if you believe the bullshit that these companies say that you can cut the seat and not use lapping compound after, mm, shame on you. Do not be surprised in the second video of this to see some absolutely crazy power figures out of this because I've never decked ahead this much. These pistons are gonna, these valves are gonna be extremely close to our custom handmade pistons. Uh, these were originally out of a Kawasaki. Um, they did not fit this cylinder head. We modified and shaved them until they did. Uh, I don't think you're gonna find anyone else crazy enough to do that that way. It was very time consuming, but um, yeah, that's us. And uh, that fuels me along with some other stuff that I mix up. And yeah, we like Freedom Fractions here. And I do like Adidas. You'll find me wearing that uh, brand all the time, but they do not pay me. I wish they paid me, but uh, I like their stuff, hence uh, their shoes as well. But, um, there's my uh, uh, little tidbit today. The lock's all finished. Rounded off all the corners. The bottom end of this will breathe just fine. I don't know how much horsepower it's worth, but it's worth at least one. A little bit of the setup we're using the time in the cams. But it's all for no avail. I'm going to end up sending these cams out to be reground.